The next morning, the Fat Controller went to see the Dominion of Canada. She gloomily looked at the Fat Controller. I suppose you'll hear about Mr. Campbell? How did you know Dominion? He came here yesterday. Yes, well... I don't want you to panic, but I have to warn you. He's claiming that there's a breach of contract. What for? When you were loaned to the National Railway Museum. He says that it stated that you were only supposed to go there and nowhere else. So his problem is that I'm here on the island of Sodor? Yes, Dominion. But I'm going to phone the National Railway Museum and see if I can get this sorted out. The engines are claiming that he was bad to you in the museum. Is this true? Yes, it is, Sir Topham. He was horrible to me and made me feel like a low-class engine. Well, maybe this could go in favour with you. Maybe he's using this contract as an excuse to get you back to Canada early. Canada early? What do you mean back to Canada early? He told me last night that on Christmas Eve, a boat's gonna take you and him back to Canada. He has it all arranged, so I must phone the National Railway Museum at once. Don't worry, Dominion, I will try my best. <gasps> this is it, Dwight D. Eisenhower. I'm done for. I'm going back to Canada early. Dominion, did you hear what Sir Topham had said? He's gonna try and sort it out. But what if he doesn't? If it states on the contract that I was only supposed to go to York. Mr. Campbell has every reason to take me back to Canada. I'm gonna spend Christmas on a boat. What am I gonna do? Percy was locked up in Tivna Sheds and he was all by himself. Disgrace on the tree, the Earl of the Fark, were like this. This is not a good start at all. But soon, very soon, Sir Tubham Hat will appreciate me. Everyone will! Thomas had to do Percy's work as well as his own, and he was very cross. The silly fool's got himself locked up in the shed, and I'm left to do all his work. Henry worried the whole day about the Minion of Canada. He stopped at the coaling plant to get some coal, and he saw the fat controller talking on his mobile phone. Ho oh, ho ho, that is great. Thank you very much. And do not forget the other little thing I have organised. This is going to be the best Christmas Sodor has ever had. Excuse me for eerie wigging, sir. But you sounded very happy on the phone. Ho oh, ho ho, I sure did, Henry. I was talking to the National Railway Museum. And they said that it does not state on the Dominion of Canada's contract that she cannot be anywhere else apart from York. So she doesn't have to go on the boat tomorrow night? She sure doesn't, Henry. She's here to stay for Christmas. Oh, thank you, sir. She'll be very pleased. But, sir, what's the other little thing you were talking about? You will have to wait until tomorrow night, Henry. It will be revealed at the Christmas Eve party. That afternoon, Nicholas Campbell met the Fat Controller at the Sidon. Why have you called me here, Sir Topham Head? I've been on the phone with the manager from the National Railway Museum. Good for you. Yes, it was very good for me. Very good indeed, actually. It states on the Dominion of Canada's contract that she is loaned to the National Railway Museum in York for two years. However, it does not state that she's not allowed to go anywhere else during that period. Which means that your argument does not stand, 
So tomorrow night, the Dominion of Canada will be spending it on the island of Sodor. She'll not be going on that boat with you. Do you mean it's the top of it? I sure do, Dominion of Canada. Tomorrow night on Christmas Eve, you'll be spending it with us. And we'll be having the biggest Christmas party Sodor has ever had. Oh, thank you, sir. So, Mr. Campbell, you have a choice. Either stay with us tomorrow night, or go on your boat and go back to Canada by yourself. Because trust me, you will be going by yourself. Okay, so Topham Hat, I guess tomorrow night I'll be going back to Canada by myself. By myself? <laughs> I don't think so. This is over. Then he left. Dwight the Eisenhower and the Dominion of Canada were very pleased. But the signal dropped, and Thomas stopped the signal. Hey there, little Tommy the Tank. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve, and I've been told it's going to be the best Christmas ever. We're told it's the best Christmas ever every year. What's the matter, Thomas? Are you not in the holiday spirit? No, I'm not in the holiday spirit. And how could I be in the holiday spirit anyway? All I have had to listen to these past few days is the Earl of the Fark with this, the Earl of the Fark with that. Dwight the Eisenhower said this! Dwight the Eisenhower said that! Dwight the Eisenhower knows everything! Oh, and as for you, Dominion of Canada doesn't want to go back home. Dominion of Canada gets bullied in Canada. Dominion of Canada's afraid. Dominion of Canada's scared. It's pathetic! It's stupid! And I'm sick of listening to it all! You two have caused nothing but trouble since you came here! Who do you think you're talking to? Who do I think I'm talking to? Who do you think you're talking to? Don't you know who I am? I am Thomas the Tank Engine! And this is my railway! You hear it? Mine! No one else's! Mine! And you two are only visitors here! No wait! You're not visitors, you're intruders, you're outsiders, only brought here to boost Sir Topham Hat's ego. Look at yous, what's so special about yous anyway? Big deal, yous were in Canada and America for all them years. Well I've been on the island of Sodor, my home, doing the same job I have done since the twenties. You can't even steam anymore either. You two cannot move without the help of another engine. You're as good as coaches. Not coaches, trucks. That's what you two are. The big, oversized, troublesome trucks. That is enough, Thomas. What controller? Where did you come from? I have been standing here all this time. And I have never been as disgusted and horrified as I have today. Apologize to those two engines at once. No. You're gonna argue with me? You can't do anything on me. I'm the flagship engine of this railway. <laughs> you think so? We will talk tonight in the sheds, Thomas. Then the signal went up and Thomas left. I am sorry for what Thomas had said. It was really uncalled for. I don't think I'm looking forward to Christmas anymore. Oh, Dominion of Canada, please don't feel like that. Thomas clearly doesn't want us. I only tried to help her, see? You just called him Percy. Uh, yeah, I guess I did. That night when Thomas returned to the sheds, the fat controller was waiting for him. Today, you acted like a vile, ill-mannered bully. Treating the minion of Canada and Dwight the Eisenhower like that. 
visitors of this railway? Oh, I've never been so ashamed. Dwight the Eisenhower asked for it, waltzing onto this place, telling us that we shouldn't have human names. Yes, but when an engine comes onto this railway and tries to boss everyone about or thinks he's better than them, what does it use always do? James quickly answered. That has happened lots of times, and we prove ourselves and show them that we're really useful engines. Correct answer, James. That's what you do. You prove them wrong, not give them mouthloads of abuse. What did you say to the Minion of Canada, Thomas? I told her the truth, coming here with her silly little soap opera story. Well, you've had an easy life, Thomas. Yes, I have. And you're not the flagship engine of this railway. You're equal to every other engine. What? Is that what Thomas said? Yes, and another thing, Thomas. I do not bring visitors to this railway to boost my own ego. And this is not your railway. Your railway? You think this is your railway? Of course he does. He has treated me like dirt all year, all because of a silly prank. Oh, shut up, Percy. No, he won't shut up. But why should he shut up, Thomas? I don't know who you are anymore, Thomas. I know who he is. He's who he always was. The cheeky little tank engine that thinks he's too big for his own wheels. This shouldn't be called the Northwestern Railway. It should be called Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. Cause that's all it is. Thomas the Star, along with me, Henry Gordon, Toby Percy and everyone else. That is right, James. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. You know something? I wish. Sometimes I wish I was never built. Sometimes I wish I never existed. And then where would you all be? Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. We don't want you anymore, Thomas! We don't want him in these sheds, sir! Either he goes, or we go! Right, Thomas? You're going to the branch line sheds, where you will stay all by yourself! Fine! 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 Then Thomas' driver took him away, and brought him to the branch line sheds. Angry. I'm so angry all the time. I'm constantly losing my temper. This has been an awful life ever since I was built. Even when we used to tell the Reverend Audrey our stories. I wish I never existed. I wish I was not here anymore. Good night, Thomas. Good night, Thomas. Goodbye, Driver and Fairman. Driver and Fairman, are you not speaking to me either? But they didn't answer and just left. If only there was a way I could end it all. I want to die. I don't want to live anymore. Then Thomas went to sleep. He was fast asleep, then suddenly he heard a voice calling him. Thomas? Thomas? Uh, oh, hello? Uh, is someone there? Of course, Thomas, it is me! It's you! Sandy Claus! <laughs>